Corey Kenshin has been giving us clues to his whereabouts, and each clue has all been hidden in plain sight. So I'm sure everyone has already noticed that the ankle-breaking Shogun himself has taken yet another 9-month break. Where does he go? Where has he been? The short and easy answer is that he just needs some time to himself and likely a healthy distance from the YouTube scene. After all, he just got done starring in a movie and probably has a lot going on for him, right? Wrong! There is a dark, hidden truth behind these breaks, and I will bring that same truth to light in this video. Now, one thing we all know and love Corey for is his legendary horror gaming videos. <laughs> but throughout the years of watching The Chosen One collect the ankles of those evil monsters, he's also introduced two other series to his channel. Those series being the infamous Spooky Scary Sundays and Cooking with Kenshin. Looking at the first episode of each series, we are met with everything that makes him so entertaining. But once we make it to a certain episode for each series, things start to take a turn. Living by myself is hard. Being unable to cook makes it even harder. My name is Corey Kenshin, and this is my journey to becoming a better cook. So I guess it is June 16th of 2015, and we are given the first episode of Cooking with Kenshin. Now let's jump to August 10th of 2015, where we watch Chef Kenshin make burgers. In this video, we get one of his infamous dishwashing intermissions, where we learn a fun fact about him. Now this may seem tame, but trust me, it only gets worse from here. Moving to February 11th, 2016, we are given episode 4 and we have another intermission, but this time we get a much more disturbing message. Creepy, right? This won't be the only time we learn of bodies hidden in Corey's basement. What the freak have you been doing, man? It's been four weeks! I, I just lost track of time. I, I was leveling up my vault. Nine months later, we are given a fifth episode to Cooking with Kenshin where we get another message, but it gets much worse. Likely because during his time off, he has only increased the number of crimes he's committed. Moving to episode 6, we are given a cryptic message in reverse telling us This man will find you. Stop watching the show. The messages continue until finally in episode 8 where we are met with the last messages and we witness this disturbing scene. Now, if you're like me, then you're probably wondering, why would he keep those messages in his videos? Well, the answer is simple. Throughout the series, we notice some errors in the videos. Those errors being Corey's pantry not being stocked with the proper ingredients for the episode. Bobby, where's the ingredients? Cake, lasagna. You're gonna do this here, just like this, huh? Huh? Go ahead. You're a big strong man. Pull the trigger. We got a studio audience. Of Guys, ho hold on one second. Or mid production, he is informed he's looking at the wrong camera. And while we're waiting on that, camera. we're gonna. Huh? You're looking at the wrong camera. So y'all just gonna move to camera three and you know, I can't get no signals now? Look, man. 
<laughs> Within these errors, we watch him interact with a crew hidden off of camera. He even expresses his anger toward the crew, helping him with these videos. Bobby, what? Where, where's the ingredients? You asked me to come back here and the junk not stocked up. No, sit down. None of y'all leaving. We gonna deal with this. Now, Bobby, explain to the people why we don't got the ingredients and you knew I <laughs> Okay, guys, I, don't worry about that. And once I learned that there are a team of individuals helping him work on these projects, I've come to the conclusion that each cryptic message we received was a warning from one of his victims being forced to edit his cooking specials. Now we are on to Spooky Scary Sundays. To get a better understanding of the true evil behind Corey Kenshin, we need to first look into episode 5 released on January 27th of 2019. In this episode, we are greeted by Corey in a snowy yard, watching him create the perfect snowball. But then he drops the act and tells us his true intentions. I'm going to be honest with you guys. Uh, I'm here to break into this house. <laughs> uh, this isn't even my backyard right now. I'm actually uh, standing uh, in someone else's someone else's backyard. It's it's Sunday, and thus means that it's a spooky, scary Sunday. Um, look at this tree that they have. <laughs> I'm here to break into their house, and I'm going to kill every single person here. <laughs> Isn't that funny? <laughs> but before that, let's enjoy. Let's enjoy winter. Now here we are at the side door of this residence. I've been watching them for a couple weeks. Okay, okay. Here's the plan. I just checked out the entire residence. There's no one home, okay? So we're gonna buy time until they get home. And since it's Spooky Scary Sunday, I figure we can go upstairs, use their computer, because I know they have one. Watch some scary videos until they get home, and then I can slaughter them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, slaughter them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So we're gonna go upstairs. Let's go. The video then cuts to him sneaking around the kitchen, and then he moves into the office of this house and says this. All right, they got a nice place here. I just scoped the joint. I'm gonna make a killing tonight. Literally. <laughs> yeah. At the end of the video, we unfortunately hear the family that lives in the house. They answer not knowing that Corey is waiting for them. Place that like button. Hey, I'm home. Uh oh. Where is everyone? They're home. I'll see y'all next week. Now let's look at episode three. It is Halloween this episode and we are met with Corey in his brand new kitchen, but something is off about him. Hi, how's it going? Uh, I'm sorry, I, I don't know exactly what the- Don't help me! He's crazy! A man come! Somebody say help, please! One second. No. One second. No, please. Uh, uh, out here. I you to <laughs> I'm sorry, uh, about the interruption. There was- Everything's fine now. The problem has been dealt with. We will have no further interruptions for the rest of the evening. <laughs> oh, Peter! You should have just played that! <laughs> Right, we just heard the brutal demise of a man named Peter. We then witnessed Corey hiding a body as well as cover his tracks. 
Now it is safe to assume that Peter was the original owner of that house, but I also believe that Peter was one of the individuals that worked on cooking with Kenshin. After witnessing the warning messages from that series and learning that Cory was already watching that house for some time, it is safe to assume that he saw the messages about him and decided to tie up loose ends. It is now episode 8 of Spooky Scary Sundays, and we witness Cory in the middle of a shootout with the police. The episode then continues like every other Spooky Scary Sunday, until the ending where we watch Cory continue his battle with the police. It even carries on to episode 9 where he is now hiding from the police in a ghillie suit. Jumping to episode 11, we continue to watch Cory evade the police until he has come up with a new plan. So here's what we're gonna do, alright? We're gonna call the police station. And we're gonna say that we saw a man in a ghillie suit going down I-94 West, all right? That'll surely lead them off our tracks. <coughs> 911. Hi, uh, I just saw a man in a ghillie suit. Uh, where? Uh, he had like a dangerous rifle on him. Um, he was going down I-94, uh, if that helps. Yes, uh, why are you calling on a private line? Um, I... He gives the police an anonymous tip to look out for a man in a ghillie suit, hoping to lead them off of his tracks. To be thorough, Corey makes another call to an associate this time. This associate's name is Edward Norton. See, the cops are going to go on I-94, and if they don't find anything, they're just gonna come back here. So I'm calling up a favor on this guy, his name's Edward. He's like a special effect makeup artist guy. I need him to, well, you'll see. Yo, Eddie, I'm calling in a favor. I need a ghillie suit on I-94 right now. My likeness, you gotta do it. I'm sorry. Well, we'll see what happens with that. In episode 12, we learned that Corey's plan was successful. We get a news broadcast learning that Edward Norton was arrested, and Corey got away scot-free with his crimes, for now. Police arrested Edward Norton yesterday after a domestic incident. He appeared in court within the last hour. Our Deanna Betaneshi just got out of the courtroom. So Deanna, what have you found out? He's been arrested on our behalf for the murders that took place at this residence that we actually did. <laughs> now we can continue with our spooky scary Sundays. Yay, guys. Manhunt is underway in Michigan for an escaped convict considered armed and dangerous. Edward Norton broke out of the Wayne County Jail on Sunday by impersonating another inmate who was about to be released. In episode 13, we are given an ABC News broadcast telling us that Edward Norton has escaped. We then cut to Corey pacing in his room looking visually stressed over this news. He's escaped, he's gonna come here. Where have you been? I've been waiting for you. Guys, did you hear? I know you've heard the news. Edward Norton has escaped, and that means he's gonna be coming here because he's gonna be really mad at me that we set him up to go to prison. The episodes continue just as regular Spooky Scary Sunday videos up until episode 17. In this episode, Corey receives a call from Edward Norton himself, warning him that he is on the way for revenge. Hold on one second. Hello. <laughs> Corey? Yes, this is he. You know I'm coming for you, right? Yeah. <laughs> Edward Norton. How'd you know? So you're finally free. Yeah. What a buy. And have access to a telephone. Yeah. That's what I'm calling you on. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, you had a debt to pay. Uh, no! I have no regrets. I'm coming for you. If you want to come, you know where I am. I do know where you are, and I'm coming. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you too. Yeah, when you... <laughs> what? Well. We then get to episode 18 and learn that Corey has been spending some time with his family and even confirms that Edward Norton gave him an extra week since the family was in town. This would end up being the last Spooky Scary Sunday video before Corey's popular nine-month break starting on June 28th, 2019 to April 3rd, 2020. It is now April 19th of 2020, and we get the 19th episode for Spooky Scary Sundays. Except this time, things are different. 
During the broadcast, a weird glitch happens on screen, and if you look carefully, you see the words outside your window. A very disturbing message, possibly sent from Corey himself. Now, one common theme that occurs in these intros are the words pay attention and see you soon. The intros continue until episode 23, where the broadcast was hijacked. <laughs> the screen we are given different warnings. Make sure your door is locked. I can see you. Be there soon, my darling. Lock the windows. Check the bathroom. Beneath those warnings, we are given an assortment of numbers. Upon inspecting the numbers, we can see that this is binary coding with a hidden message. And that message translates to my name is Edward, revealing to us that Edward Norton has hijacked Spooky Scary Sundays and is giving warnings to Corey. Moving to episode 27, we are met with Edward's next warning. Throughout the screen, there are letters hidden in different areas. Once you find all of the letters and put them together, it reads, I am coming. Another warning to Corey that Edward is getting closer and closer for his revenge. In episode 28, we are immediately met with more binary coding, however, this time it is not a warning but a message to us, the fans. The message reads, If you are reading this, congratulations. You have been chosen to witness the end. Signed, Edward. In episode 30, the broadcast is hijacked, yet again, by Edward Norton, with the message, Now is the time. I have come. We then see Corey doing his intro until he hears what sounds like someone breaking into his house. Yo, up. Uh Okay, I know I'm late this time. It's not even freaking Sunday. Um, guys? I know the doorbell didn't ring at 1.12 a.m. Okay. <laughs> anyway, guys, yes, I am sorry. It's Spooky Scary Sunday. It's late. What the freak? Hello? Hi, is this Corey? Yes, this is he. Has your home security system been triggered? Yeah, I actually heard some glass shatter downstairs. Please I remain calm, sir. I am calm. Corey, you're in your office, correct? Yeah, how do you know? He's in his office. Please wait one moment. What? <laughs> he then gets a phone call from a number that has no regular phone number, but instead more binary coding. This coding simply translates to Ed. We then hear the caller's voice and find out it is a woman who is working with Edward Norton, giving him information on Corey's location. Corey then goes to investigate, but is quickly stalked and captured by Edward Norton. Corey being tied up in a room, 
and then walks in Edward Norton, confirming all of the hidden messages he has sprinkled across Corey's videos. Corey then asks, What happens now? And then everything seems to go back to normal? Corey's back on screen, continuing his regularly scheduled Spooky Scary Sunday. Hey! Hey! How's it going? 30 episodes strong. The series continues on up until episode 40, where we are hit with a twist. No. No. It's not even broken. Hey, Corey. Oh. Play a little game. Oh, yeah, Stop screaming, Corey. No! Help! Help! Oh! Ow! Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh. Boy, am I happy to see you. I am so thirsty. <sighs> I don't even know where to begin. I've been locked in that basement for so long. The person that's been hosting Spooky Scary Sunday ever since episode 30 was Edward. All I can remember, I heard a window break open. It was Edward Norton. He locked me up took my freaking shirt and I presume he came back upstairs to host the rest of episode 30 and I the real Corey have been tied up ever since I don't know where he is I couldn't I can't hear anything I don't think he's here in episode 42 we see Edward Norton on the phone with his associate they both discuss Corey's recent escape likely putting together his next plan for his revenge the series continues with a new and improved Local 78 broadcast for a start of each episode. Each broadcast is now even creepier than before. given new instructions saying, don't look away. These instructions are likely Corey trying to drop the guard of his viewers, making it easier for him to move in and collect his next victim. On to episode 50, we are given yet another secret message broadcast. This time we hear multiple different numbers, those numbers being 9, 6, 8, 8, 4, 4, 6, 5, 4, 6, 4, 6, 6, 3. Now this time I will have to admit that I ran into a bit of a bump. Not even I could find a translation for these numbers. However, just seconds later during Corey's intro, we are met with the letters A R D D W E. And later in this video, we have more letters show up on screen. Those letters being N O T R O N. Taking all of these letters and putting them together, we get Edward Norton. Now this time, I do not believe it is only Edward leaving these messages. If we look at episode 52 carefully, we can notice a sort of back and forth going on between Corey and Edward. 
In the beginning broadcast, we are met with the words, pay attention, and an assortment of different letters and numbers. Looking at this, we can find out that these are hexadecimal patterns, which translates to, congratulations if you are reading this. I am impressed. However, your time is still coming to an end. Enjoy your fleeting days. Signed, Ed. But if we move to 3 minutes and 34 seconds, at the bottom right we are met with different numbers. After doing some research, I found that these numbers actually lead to a video on YouTube. In this video, we have a black screen with the name Edward in front of us. In the background of this video, we hear what sounds like some unsettling chanting. But if we listen closely, we can make out the numbers 11, 9, 12, 12, 8, 9, 13 being chanted over and over again. Doing some further analysis, I was able to decode these numbers to the words, kill him. This is likely Corey sending a message to us, the fans, to get rid of Edward for him. Jumping to episode 60, we get a new set of binary code from Edward translating to, I'm back. If you are reading this, I'll see you tonight. And then finally, on episode 65, we are met with a bunch of different letters. And after inspecting them, we can decode these letters to the message, don't look away. This being our final secret message of Spooky Scary Sundays. Now after everything we have gone over, we are back to the main question. Where does Corey go on these breaks? Well, after spending all this time doing heavy research in his videos, it is clear as day that Corey is a true evil villain of YouTube. In these breaks, the list of crimes he has committed only continues to grow. He is likely collecting more victims and planning what to do next to take care of Edward Norton once and for all.